Hi, I'm Lucy Reed. I'm a family barrister and mediator, and I've made this video for people who are going through a family court case, but who don't have a lawyer to explain things to them. The video is mainly prepared for parents involved in disputes about their children, but should also be helpful if you're involved in another kind of family court case, for example, about your finances after separation. As a family barrister, I'm in court most days dealing with this kind of case. And I know that coming to court, particularly when you don't have a lawyer, and particularly for the first time, can be a very stressful and confusing experience. I remember the nerves I had when I first started as a lawyer and had to speak in court, and I have first-hand experience of the stress involved in representing myself. I meet litigants in person every day who are finding things very stressful, and I'd like to help make it a bit easier. Of course, this video isn't legal advice, but I hope it will be helpful. Although you'll probably still be nervous about what will happen with your case, it might help a little if I talk through some of the practical stuff so you have less to worry about and can focus upon saying what you want to say to the judge. This is the second of three videos that I've made and so it might make more sense if you've already watched the first video. In the last video, I talked about getting ready to come to court and what might happen before the hearing, but we didn't look inside the courtroom. In this video, I'm going to focus on what might happen at the first court hearing and I'm going to show you what the courtroom might look like. The courtrooms here in Bristol won't be exactly like the courts in other areas, but it should give you a rough idea, so let's take a look. And before we go, don't forget to turn off your phone. Your case might be in front of a district judge. In Bristol, the district judges use a small courtroom like this one, and the judge will be in a slightly raised position. Usually, if you don't have a lawyer, you'll be invited to sit along the front row with your Mackenzie friend, if you have one, and along from the other party and their lawyer, if they have one. A party who's represented by a lawyer may sit next to their lawyer or sometimes will be asked to sit directly behind them. And as you can see, in the family court, neither the judge nor the lawyers wear wigs or gowns. Every court will have a witness box. In modern courts, this is usually a small table like this one, rather than an enclosed box. Sometimes the judge will have a court clerk in court with him. They'll usually be sitting, doing some administrative work quietly whilst the case continues, and they'll sit here. If your case is about children, and this is the first hearing, you may find that there is a Kafkas officer in court with you. And this person might have had a brief chat with you when you first arrived at court. They may try to help both of you to find an agreed way forwards before the hearing, or the judge may send you out to have a chat with them. Usually, they'll see both of you separately. CAFCAS stands for Children and Families Court Advisory and Support Service. CAFCAS is an independent agency which provides guidance to the court in cases about children, and CAFCAS officers are trained social workers. Each court has a slightly different scheme, but it usually involves some contact from CAFCAS before the first hearing by telephone and at the first hearing. Shortly before or at the first hearing, the CAFCAS officer may give you a copy of a letter telling you what the results of their safeguarding inquiries have been and what they think should happen next. Not all courts are laid out the same as the ones that I'm showing you. In many courts, district judges will hear cases in chambers, which just means their office, and there'll be a horseshoe arrangement of tables which everyone will sit round with the judge at his own desk at the top. It might look something like this. Your case might be heard by two or three family magistrates rather than by a judge. A family magistrate is a volunteer from the local community who makes decisions on family cases with the assistance of a legal advisor. Although family magistrates aren't legally qualified, they're usually quite experienced in dealing with family cases. They'll often sit in a courtroom like this one, with the legal advisor sitting in front of them. Sometimes cases are heard in larger courtrooms than the ones I've shown you, but the procedure and the process will be very similar, even if the design isn't so modern. People often worry about what to call district judges or magistrates. In fact, magistrates are just referred to as sir or madam, although people often say, your worships, this isn't strictly necessary. And district judges are also referred to as sir or madam. Your judge will probably be a district judge. If, though, your judge is a circuit judge, you should call them your honour. The court list outside court will probably say what sort of judge is hearing your case, and if it is a circuit judge, it will say his or her honour on that list. Ask the court staff or even the judge if you're not sure about this, but try not to worry too much about it. 
As long as you don't call anyone a rude name, nobody will be terribly offended. People also worry about what to wear to court. Again, try not to get too worried about this. We aren't allowed to film at court on a weekday, which is why this waiting area is so empty. But if we could, you would see a real variety of clothing. Wear something you feel comfortable in and that's not going to be a distraction either to you or to anyone else. If dressing smart makes you feel confident, then dress smart. Most judges will simply expect you to take your hat off in court and won't be at all bothered if you're not wearing a suit. Eating in court isn't permitted and chewing gum or crunching polos probably won't go down too well. Bringing hot or fizzy drinks into court is also not permitted, but there will be water in the courtroom. If you have a medical condition that means you need to pause for a snack or to use the bathroom frequently, let the judge know. Or if it's something that's a bit embarrassing, pass a message through the court staff. If there are other practical issues arising from a disability, do let the court know so that adjustments can be made. For example, if you have a hearing impairment, you may need to ask the court to switch on the hearing loop, or you may just need to position yourself in a particular location in the courtroom so that you can hear properly. You'll usually be expected to stand when the judge comes into the room and when he goes out, although he may be already sat down when you come into the courtroom. If your case is in front of a district judge or before the magistrates, you can usually sit down for the rest of the hearing. But if your case is in front of a more senior judge, you may be expected to stand while you're talking to the judge. If this is the case, though, you'll be told. And if you're at all unsure, just ask the judge. Let's look at what kind of hearing you're coming to. If the court order says directions or has a time estimate of something like 30 minutes or an hour, the court will probably be focusing on finding out about the case and getting the case ready for making a decision. But it's unlikely that any major or permanent decisions will be made on that day unless they are agreed. Don't forget that you won't necessarily be finished 30 minutes or an hour after the time the hearing is listed. The first court hearing you go to in most cases will be one of these short hearings. So although everything can be sorted out at the first hearing, if everything's agreed, you shouldn't necessarily expect everything to be sorted out in one day. Don't be too worried if you don't have an opportunity to say everything you want to about the case. The judge at a directions hearing will just need to understand an outline of what your position is and why, so that he can make a plan to get the case ready for a decision on another day. Remember to bring all the court papers to court with you so that you can follow what's being said and correct any errors. In the first video, I talked about how it can sometimes be helpful to speak to the lawyer for the other side before you go into court, even if all you achieve is to establish that you really don't agree about anything. You'll probably come away from a discussion with the lawyer with a better idea of what they're likely to say in court and a clearer idea of the things you need to think about and to focus on when you're speaking to the judge. You can also make sure that they have all your documents and that you have all of theirs, which should avoid surprises or delays. All lawyers have a duty to assist the court, so whilst they can't give you advice about the case and they have a duty to their own client, they mustn't mislead you either. As part of their duty to assist the court, the judge will expect them to try and agree things with you before the hearing, even if you're only able to agree about what you disagree about. If when speaking to a lawyer outside court you're asked to agree something and you don't feel comfortable doing so, just say you'd like to hear what the judge says first. It's fine to agree things outside court and then ask the judge to approve your agreement, but if you're unsure, you don't have to sign up to anything. During the hearing, it can be difficult to know what to say and when. And you'll naturally have lots of things that you're desperate to tell the judge. In the course of each hearing, every party will have an opportunity to address the judge either through their lawyer if they have one, or directly if they don't. Often, if there's a lawyer involved in the case, the judge will ask them to summarise what the dispute is about at the start of the hearing. It's tempting to interrupt them every time they say something you disagree with, but try to avoid interrupting others whilst they're speaking if you can. You will be given a chance to have your say before the end of the hearing. If there's any disagreement about Mackenzie friends, the judge will usually deal with that first. I suggest that before the hearing, you make a short list of the things you want to ask the judge to think about or to order at this hearing. As you listen, make a note of important errors or things you want to pick up on so that you're able to raise them when it's your turn to speak. Lists are usually a better way to make sure you cover all the main issues than a script. The judge should make sure that you aren't interrupted when it's your turn, although he might want to ask you some questions to make sure that the information you give him is the information that will actually help. At the end of the hearing, the judge will decide what orders he will make. 
If it's a first hearing and you haven't managed to agree everything, the judge will make directions. These are orders telling each of you what you need to do to get the case ready for a final decision. The judge should explain those to you as he goes along, but if there are words you don't understand or dates that you don't catch, just ask the judge to repeat or to explain. It's a good idea to take a note of the order as you go along because you may not get a copy of it to take with you when you leave the hearing and it can take a few days to come through in the post. You could ask your Mackenzie friend, if you have one, to take a note for you of the dates that you need to do things by and what it is you need to do and then you can concentrate on the hearing. The judge may ask the lawyer involved in the case to write out a copy of the order before leaving court and you may be asked to wait whilst this happens. Sometimes the judge will ask the lawyer to type a copy of the order and to send it into the court by email. The lawyer doing this is responsible for producing an order which matches what the judge said he wanted. If you aren't happy with the order the judge has made, it's tempting to try and make improvements to it by disputing the written version. But the judge will expect the order that the lawyer drafts to match what they've said. If you don't think it's an accurate record of the order the judge made, you should say so but otherwise you are stuck with the order that the judge made, unless of course you appeal it. In the next video, I'm going to give you some information about giving evidence and about challenging evidence. In order to make this film, we've had to get special permission from the court service and we're not allowed to film people involved in real cases. You should never record your court case unless the judge has given you permission. In these videos, we've used our volunteers to show a scenario involving a male litigant in person and his Mackenzie friend, and a female litigant and her lawyer. Of course, in your case, it may be the other way around. There may be no lawyers at all, or you may both have a Mackenzie friend.